I'm senior airman, Brianne Sachs. We went ahead and uh, launched that sled for the first time successfully in a, in a couple years. Uh, so in the past, we have gone 513 miles per hour. Fire. Yeah. <laughs> the test today was significantly faster than any test that we've uh, previously done. It was great. Yeah, it was really, I was really proud of the team. They did a lot of work uh, and they did an awesome job. The test on March 4th holds a current record with 633 miles per hour. But just two days before, the 846 had a record-breaking launch with their sled clocking in at 513 miles per hour. Reporting from Holloman Air Force Base New Sled, uh, where we use a very cold liquid helium to essentially levitate the sled via superconducting magnets, uh, and it's a developmental system, so we went ahead and uh, launched that sled for the first time successfully in a, in a couple years. and. Uh, got some good data as a result of doing that. So. so probably the best way to describe it, the if you look at the other rail that we're really well known for, it's very, very fast, but it's also a really rough ride for systems that go down that rail. There's a lot of vibration. So the maglev system gives us the ability to test, test uh, systems without as much vibration. So if you have si sensitive components that are part of a weapon system and you want to test them in a, a realistic re environment, uh, a system like this allows us to do that, so that's why we want to develop it so that we can test those types of components in a more operationally relevant environment. We've had the assistance of the contractor that helped us build this system for, for, for previous tests. Uh, a couple years ago, we basically decided that we thought we were ready to do it on our own, uh, and we tried a few times. Unfortunately, we had some issues with some of our procedures uh, and understanding how to operate some of the specialized hardware that you have to use when you're dealing with uh, cryogenic uh, type um, elements when you're you know you have liquid helium and things like that it, it becomes difficult so uh, we've got the, the contractor back to give us a little bit more education and we went ahead and uh, executed a mission on Wednesday and then we executed one today completely on our own the one on Wednesday we had their help but today we were completely solo so it was great yeah it was really I was really proud of the team uh, it's, they did a lot of work to try to, to really improve our procedures and try to understand how the system works. Uh, and they did an awesome job, so it was, it was really cool to see it go. This one was a little bit different because we knew we had to really take a step back and try to understand it uh, better than we thought we did before. Um, and uh, so in this case, it took us about six months or so to, to really, again, take a step back and, and look at our procedures and refine those and then uh, work with the, the contractor again to make sure we were ready to go. Um, so that's, that's a little longer than normal. Um, I would say typically now that we're ready to go, it, we'd probably have a month or two of preparation time just to make sure the system was ready to go. But um, yeah, so six months is time, but normally uh, quite a bit shorter than that. So. For the maglev system, uh, we're gonna, what we had planned to do after this test was, was refine the design of the sled itself. So this was a fairly heavy design, so we want to look at some lighter materials and continue to, to see what sort of capability we can get out of the system in terms of the speeds that we're capable of going uh, so that we can, again, measure those vibration environments uh, at various speeds and understand what the system is really capable of as we continue to go faster and faster. That's, I think, one of the neatest things about being part of the test track is the specialized expertise that, that we have here, and that's... What we tell everybody that comes out for a tour is it's so cool, all the different elements that make up the track. You have experts that know how to run a program from the top down. You have the guys that are out in the shops, know how to build sleds. You have the engineers know how to design sleds. You have the engineers and the technicians that instrument the sleds. And it's, it's just a, it's a, it's a great team effort. It's really neat to see, so. I just feel lucky to have the opportunity to be here when we're uh, doing testing like this. Uh, it's, it's really an honor to be a part of it and hopefully even after I'm gone they'll continue to do great work and I'm sure they will and continue to develop uh, new and better capabilities in the future. So, so yeah today was the fastest uh, test we've ever done with maglev and we went uh, 633 miles per hour uh, so in the past we have gone actually Wednesday we went 513 miles per hour and prior to that uh, which was a couple years ago, we, were, we went 510. So the test today was significantly faster than any test that we've uh, previously done. So. so we launched our mag magnetic levitation sled from launch point, um, but we did achieve uh, staging of the motors, um, which is the first time, Wednesday was the first time we did it, and we uh, did it again today. And we also achieved the fastest speed on a magnetic levitation sled was 928 feet per second.
I was the project manager, so I kind of um, essentially gathered everybody in the team together, um, put all the paperwork together, all the safety stuff together, um, and essentially gathered everything, the, the personnel and the paperwork needed to put a test together and make it happen on launch day. Uh, it was nerve-wracking in here, you know, while we were all looking to make sure that the magnets were working the way they're supposed to work. Um, but once it went on, on Wednesday, you know, we saw it go, which was the first time, I think, in, in three years. 2013 was the last time we launched a, um, a successful mission. So Wednesday, it felt awesome. Today, it felt even uh, better. It's a few months of, of preparation. Um, so... We've got different shops at the track. We've got the, the sled launch um, guys who are the ones who are doing the, the work out here in the rail, um, bringing, you know, bringing the, uh, the sled out here, putting the motors on, setting up the motors. And we've got instrumentation crew who uh, take care of um, all the instrumentation that goes on the sled. Um, and then they connect all of that to here, the, the the mobile launch that kind of controls um, everything um, that's connected to, to the sled. Um, we've got the project management flight, so I'm part of it, and I get you know help from from them as well. We have um, the data engineers who are out here taking pictures, and they're also the ones uh, that put together all the data and the data reports and and kind of tell us what happened. Um, and so we kind of bring everybody together and, um, and make this work. Um, we have tons of meetings to make sure that everything is going well. Um, another big achie achievement that I didn't talk about when you asked me that question, um, one of the reasons we were, we were not successful in the past was because uh, our procedures for this, it's a very complicated system, as you saw. Um, weren't up to par, and so uh, we all worked really hard to get those procedures um, very clear, step by step, and everything seemed to go very smooth. Today, uh, in this launch, we broke the world record on, uh, on land speed on the magnetic levitation rail. It was 928 feet per second. Up here, so I finished the final wire right here. The little, the red box on the Five, four, three, two, one, zero, fire. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I have never seen this. So yeah, there's like a, a layer, kind of like a good thermos would be. Right up here, you can actually see the ring that's just under the screen up here. Um, but that's the screen. You, can, you said you're out here. 